right. On the phone. Yeah. They've gone past the crossing. They have it. They have a car. A car attempted to pick them up. At that point, we intercepted them. Overall, there's about 15,000 cigarettes seized in the operation, which is very successful. That's correct. Thank you. All three individuals uh, that were intercepted are known to us. One is definitely an organiser and he has previous offences here at the airport. The other guy with him has previous offences here at the airport as well. And the person picking them up also has a previous offence where he had 11,000 cigarettes seized off. If we take a three day period here last week, the officers here seized 301,000 cigarettes. The, the, the profits to be made because of the differential in taxes is, is absolutely huge. In reality, ant smugglers are very small links in the supply chain. For the real action, we need to move to Dublin Port. This is where big time smugglers come into the picture. Last month, customs officers there seized a container stuffed to the hilt with 9 million counterfeit Benson and Hedges. The cigarettes were destined for an address in Ashburn County Meath. What you're looking at here is master cases of cigarettes. Um, typically they told about 10,000 cigarettes, so we're probably talking in the region of 7 or 8 million cigarettes. Um, they originated in China, so more than likely you're dealing with a counterfeit cigarette here. Now, I'm not a smoker myself, but if I was a smoker, I certainly wouldn't smoke one of these. Um, the filters probably aren't taking uh, all the nasty carcinogenics out of them, but uh, we're seeing more and more counterfeit cigarettes now. Smugglers, particularly the major players, are constantly raising the stakes. Last year, customs officers and Gardaí seized 120 million illegal cigarettes from a ship here at Greenore Port in North County Louth. One of almost 1,500 bags of animal feed containing the cigarettes being opened at Dublin Port. The seizure was the biggest in the history of the state and one of the biggest ever in Europe. The cigarettes had a street value of 50 million euro and would have resulted in the loss of 40 million euro to the exchequer if they had got through. The consignment was destined for criminal and paramilitary gangs who control the cigarette business along both sides of the border. There are long and well-established connections between paramilitaries and those involved in the illegal cigarette trade here. In May 1998, Patrick McDonough from Nocton's Close Dundalk was one of two men caught carrying a 900-pound bomb across the border at Carrigina in County Louth. To put that in context, the bomb was four times the size of the device used just a year earlier in the Oma atrocity. The court heard McDonough was transporting the bomb as a favour for the real IRA and it was part of a deal related to his involvement in illegal cigarettes. He was sentenced to six years in prison. After he was released, McDonough was caught smuggling 20,000 cigarettes through Dublin airport. He was fined just 150 euro. Only certain groupings can organise the importation of a container of cigarettes. The top echelon of criminal gangs and subversives who have absolute international support. So basically you're talking about serious criminal gangs and paramilitaries? Absolutely. They historically funded their activities from smuggling. They have now gone into the smuggling of cigarettes. They are the only people who have the capacity to deliver. Despite an increase in seizures by customs officers here, there are concerns that the quantities found are just the tip of the iceberg. We generally work on the principle that uh, around 5% of the total illicit tobacco smuggled is seized by customs. You're suggesting that for every one container seized, there are 19 other containers getting through into Ireland? That's our fear, that 95% uh, of the illicit uh, tobacco that is sent towards the Irish market is actually successfully entering that market. How do you react to the criticism from manufacturers that it's just the tip of the iceberg, that it's not good enough? If, if we knew how many were coming through and, and where they were coming through, they'd all be seized. Um, but, but you are correct in, in that uh, uh, revenue and custom service across the world would admit that there is only a certain percentage uh, of smuggled product um, that is intercepted. 
So where do the containers come from and who has the massive resources and capabilities required to supply the Irish market? To answer that we need to look to the Far East and places like the Philippines, Malaysia and China where the infamous triad gangs have long been connected with the supply of counterfeit cigarettes. To get an insight into the triads and more importantly their connections with Ireland we travelled to Singapore where we had lengthy discussions with a number of intermediaries who eventually introduced us to Sammy, a member of the notorious crime gang. A meeting was arranged for a local hotel. Fearing reprisals from gang members, he only agreed to talk if we hid his identity. During my time in the triad, I got to know people involved in illegal smuggling. I got to know people who are wanted criminals who escape overseas. In particular, these people are based in the UK and Ireland. They purchase illicit cigarettes in Singapore and ship them to the UK and Ireland. A rough estimate would be two container loads of cigarettes every month. Is there any involvement with Irish criminals? The UK and Ireland criminal guns would be involved in getting the goods supplied by this gun. Unlike any of those we've seen so far, the triads are really major international criminals. They don't just deal in illegal cigarettes, they're also heavily involved in drugs and human trafficking. They promise the women jobs in European countries and then once these victims agree, they will smuggle them into the UK and Ireland or other European countries using the money they have earned from the cigarette smuggling. What Sammy told us next just shows the lengths hardcore criminals like the triads will go to to protect themselves and their business. Once when using a container to smuggle women to the UK and Ireland, the container was on the ship at sea. Customs were coming. As a result, the gun threw the women to the sea. It happened last year. The container was shipped out from Malaysia. 17 women were drowned when they were thrown into the sea. This cold-blooded murder of 17 women is a chilling reminder of how ruthless some of these criminals are. It's also a reminder of how little they value human life when it comes to providing smokers with a few cheap cigarettes. In order to move the containers of cigarettes from one continent to another, smugglers need connections in the shipping industry. Daisy works in Singapore port and has inside knowledge of how smuggling operates there. Fearing for her safety, she only agreed to speak to me if I kept her identity secret. I've been involved in the secret business for many years and uh, I'm quite familiar with the supply chain of cigarettes. Most of the counterfeits come from China and the smaller countries, when 